it's been sweltering here in recent days. Temperatures around 40 degrees. But if that is the worst Bamako must suffer this week, its people will count themselves lucky. For all the troubles in Mali in recent years, Bamako had escaped the worst until last November. A siege at the Radisson Blue Hotel shattered that sense of security. By the time it was over, 22 people were dead, and the jihadists who prey on the north of Mali had demonstrated they could strike just as easily in Bamako too. The city's response is an ongoing clampdown and continued state of emergency. We have many agents on the ground. There are patrols every day, even on motorbikes. In some streets, like on the bridge, there are roadblocks from 6 p.m. to 8 a.m. in the morning. We are doing the best we can to let people in Bamako feel safe. Officials say they've arrested hundreds since the siege. They are declining to elaborate. But they say the jihadists are paying well and can lure disaffected, desperate young Malians. Seven months on from the siege, there are no obvious scars. But beneath the veneer of normalcy lies a fear of instability. And many here are alive to the dangers posed by terror outfits. Mama Dunya Dudu runs a store on the ground floor of the Radisson. He says he is determined not to be cowed. Something happens every, every day, everywhere in the world. So we just uh, continue to be on life. But this is our place. This is Mali. Mali is uh, our country. Even uh, attack terrorists uh, can be. We, we, can't, we can't stay at home and uh, drop here. We have to be work. The UN Security Council is to decide in the coming days whether to extend the mandate of its peacekeeping mission. In Bamako, there is little question those peacekeepers are needed. Jin Kyo, CCTV, Bamako, Mali.